Okay, I uh, hope this works out pretty good. I just thought I'd give you a little bit of demo here. Uh, right now I'm just idling along. One thing I want you to notice is right down here in this corner, you got heading course over ground, okay? When you have your heading sensor set up correctly, when you're doing basically a straight line, they should be within five degrees of each other. As you can see, mine stay pretty much within one degree of each other. And that tells you that I have no interference on my heading sensor, which is actually a magnetic compass. So uh, we've got temperature, miles per hour, and depth, which is what I normally run on my units. You can turn those off and on if you want to, and I'll try to give you a show, show you how to do that here in just a second. Uh, you can see we're going in a straight line right now. Uh, there is a crappie mat right there off to the left, uh, right there, it's probably a little hard to see on the video, but that is a crappie mat. It looks like they've got three rocks holding it down. Alright, I'm going to turn the boat, and the, the screen's going to smear just a little bit, because when you're turning the boat, that narrow beam of the side imaging unit uh, get, it's like sweeping a radar beam around. If you've ever noticed the 360 stuff, it looks a little smeared, and that's the reason, because the beam's turning on the 360. Okay? All right, get the boat headed pretty much straight again. It's a little hard to hold the camera still and do a straight line. All right. Once again, you can turn these off and on. Let me show you how to do that. You go over here to Menu, and... I think what I'll do is I'll pull the boat into neutral. All right, you go over here to menu, menu key, hit it once. That's the menu that comes up for your active screen. Okay, on the top, you can change your active screen to left and right. Okay, but that's, that's the menu for your active screen, the screen you've got running right now, which in our case is the down imaging, side imaging, and the... Well, anyway, <laughs> 2D. Okay. All right. Now, if you hit the menu key again, you get the advanced menu. Okay. At the top is all your choices. Okay. You've got your alarms, and you can turn them off and on as much as you want to. Uh, I normally leave most of them off. Uh, normally, I go down here to the off course alarm. I normally turn it off like so, and I go down here and... Okay, if you don't know how to do this, simply press the arrows up and down, moves your menu up and down, left and right, changes them, okay? Now, you go all the way back to the top, like so, okay? And you'll notice at the very top up here, I'm in the active window. Here's my sonar screen. There is beam select, that is 2D, leave that on 200, okay? You've got image imaging frequency. That is your uh, side image, and I leave normally run that on 455. Surface clutter. I don't have a whole lot on my lake, so don't worry about it too much. Now this is your 2D max mode and clear mode. I like max mode because I like to see everything my 2D is showing me. Uh, some people say the clear mode's better in shallow water because the depth doesn't jump around. You can play with that. Fish ID is off. Fish ID sensitivity. RTS is the little small window uh, to the right of the 2D. You can turn it off and on and it, you can see what it does. There's all kinds of sonar colors. That's your 2D sonar. Bottom view. Zoom width. 83 kilohertz, which you don't have on anyway. Depth lines off and on. That's for your 2D SI range lines. Now you can see what happens when I turn them on. It puts the range lines that tell how far away from their boat something is. Okay, now the boat is still, so that's the reason things are a little bit blurry. Blurry. All right, uh, let's see. Keep going. Your noise filter. I run it on low. It just comes on low. Max depth. You want to run it. Just, let's say you're the most deep place in the area you're fishing is 100 feet. You're going to run it at 100 feet. 
you want to hit max depth as, as low or as shallow as you can run it in my part of the woods here, 60 feet in this arm of the lake. You're not going to get that deep, so I leave it at 60 feet. Water type is fresh. High, high definition side scan transducer is connected. Color bar, and once again, is 2D. You can play with it. Temperature graph. Down imaging beam width. DI colors. And then, then <clears throat> when we're done, it goes right back to the active window. This is your navigation. Uh, you'll have to go through those. Something I use all the time is casting rings. Uh, that draws a ring around your waypoint so that you know how far you are from your waypoint. Uh, north reference, I keep it true. I think it has magnetic, but I keep it true. Uh, waypoint decluttering, that just cuts the names out of the waypoints so you don't have a bunch of names overlapping each other. You can turn that off and on. Uh, trolling grid, there's some other stuff to do here. All right, north up indicator. Anyway, you can go through all those. Now, this one here is an important one. This is the heading sensor line. And I'll show you what that is here in just a second. This is off and on. You want to make sure that's on because that gives you the compass heading on the map. So when you're not moving, the direction your boat is pointed at, that header line is pointed that direction. And I'll show you that in just a second. All right, heading offset. If you have your, if you have your puck set correctly, you don't have to worry about that. And then there's just all kinds of stuff on here. All right, there's the chart. Okay. Uh, it's not a whole lot you can do with this unless you're doing a unless you're running a Lake Master card. That shaded depth, I've got it set to eight feet because I didn't have my Lake, or normally have my Lake Master, but there's just a bunch of stuff. All right, back to the, okay, this is set up. Uh, feet, miles, miles per hour in the advanced mode. There's a trip log, you can do whatever you need to do with it. If you're gonna see how far it is from point to point. Uh, select readouts. Okay, the readout's at the bottom. You can turn them off and on. If you watch that depth, see if I change that, I can change it to course. Go back the other way, I can actually turn it off. Okay. Now, some of these you can change, some you can't. You can change all of these except on map mode and on map mode some of them are hardwired in it won't let you change them okay that is under select readouts to get out of a menu you simply come over here push the exit button and that gets you back to the main menu okay all right uh, whoop exit again uh you got to hit exit again it'll take you back to the main menu Okay, this is, this is things you can turn off and on if you want to cycle through them, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can see I have some of it hidden, some of it visible, and it will make sense when you start playing with it. There's your accessories. Uh, uh, there's a record and eye track, which if you don't have an eye pilot, that won't do you, any, well, you can do it, but it won't do you any good. Okay, this right here, if you want to, take screenshots so there's a nice little wad of fish moving through right there and there they are on the side imaging screen right there even though we're sitting still you can see them all right screenshot if you want to take a picture you have to have an SD card a blank SD card if you want to take a picture you turn this on now the one irritating thing about hummingbird is every time you hit mark right there which is how you set a waypoint if that is on and you hit mark it automatically takes a snapshot plus here's the irritating thing plus it makes a waypoint so if you're just out taking random snapshots to post on the forum you're gonna have a whole bunch of random waypoints you got to get rid of but you know there's ways you can get around that okay hit exit takes you right back up to the top 
Okay, this is the network setup. Unit name, which on this one is factory. Uh, exit, network source. You can see I've got two units running, so it gives me a choice of two units. I've got them networked together. And you can see my front unit I've actually got named Stern for some reason. All right, anyway. Okay, exit. And that's it. Share waypoints off and on. I don't know if you're networking units, but it's on by default, I think. All right, let me just show you some of the screens real quick. Okay. All right, if you hit the view key or the exit key, it cycles through the screens. Okay, there's 2D, 2D and SI in it. I don't have any waypoints, of course, so that, I mean, no images, so there's nothing there. Uh, there's the shot I took you, 304 hours, voltage. They're showing you what's connected and what's not, and there's some of these screens like that one right there I never use. I need to go back and hide it so it doesn't pop up. All right. And there's a map and waypoint, which I use quite often. Down imaging, side imaging. Probably should be fishing, it looks like. Okay, let's go to the map screen. Now, let me show you a handy little shortcut here. You go to the view button right there, and you hold it down. That pops up. That's a shortcut key. So if we want to go to chart, we go down to chart, we go straight to chart view, and there you go. All right, I'm going to zoom out. Now this is not Lake Master. This is simply uh, whatever Hummingbird has in it, which is not very good for Pickwick. Okay, now this line right here. If you see this line right there, that is your heading line. And watch what happens as I put the boat in gear. Okay. Okay, that other arrow you're popping up, that is the GPS header line. When the boat's moving more than three miles an hour, that comes up. I'm turning the boat a little bit, which is why they're not together. But you can see, as I move the header line, or as I move the boat, the boat's drifting sideways. So the GPS is showing one thing, the header line's showing the actual direction. I'm going to run right over that waypoint, which is a stump bed I marked a little while ago. And you can see the, the benefit of the header line. The header line will let you go right over that waypoint very easily, where sometimes if the wind's blowing, sometimes that GPS line's off a little bit. All right, so let me pull this down to a stop. And when we get down to less than, I think it's less than one mile an hour or something like that, that GPS line will go away. All right. Yeah, we're still at 1.3. And we got a little current today, so it may not go away. But you can see the boat icon. If that GPS or if that heading sensor wasn't hooked up, that would be a little circle. Okay. Yeah, that that. Okay, that once again, there it goes. It went away. All right, that header line is the one you want to keep on. Well, there's the current kicking it back on. All right. But anyway, I'm just sort of wanted to shoot you a little video. Whoa, there's a big school of fish. And there they are on the side imaging right there. Even though we're sitting still, there they are in the down image. There they go again. Alright, so anyway, just I hope that helped you. Whoa, there they are. Hope that helped you a little bit. And if you know, I don't know, I guess you know about the shortcut keys. There's three of them. When I push one of them, it takes me to something I have preset. And this one is full SI. And you can take all these boxes away on the bottom if you want a full screen. But one thing about the 1198 that's really nice, they're at the bottom, so they really don't bother you that much. Let's see if I can kick this thing in gear here. Clean this picture up. See how that's getting a lot more clear as we get a little speed? I normally idle at about 3 to 4 miles an hour. I was going to reset the factory defaults, but I think I'm going to leave them like they are so you don't have to 
I don't know how much you know about these units. You may have one, I don't know, but that way you don't have to, to reset everything. Uh, now, watch this. When I hit the menu key, that is the sub menu for the side imaging. They all have a sub menu. If I go down to SI Enhance and I turn that up, that little box pops up. From that point, you can change their sensitivity. You can go down to contrast. You can see what it does. But you can change all that stuff with that little box right at the bottom. And it's, it's very helpful. Okay. And to get rid of that box, you hit exit. Boom. There you go. All right. Okay. Well, I think you'll enjoy the unit very good unit well here we come up on a hard spot I think there's a little hump out here but a lot of fish on it I might stop and fish it before I go in all right hope you enjoy the unit uh, any questions feel free to PM me on the board or give me a call or anything bye